What is the first thing that pops into your mind when you hear a word book talk? Well, if you're a casual frequenter of the web, you probably assume it's a space on TikTok for people who love reading. I used to think that, and I was partially right. It is a place for people who love reading, reading porn almost exclusively. This is such a huge phenomenon, it basically created a whole new genre for the publishing industry. Well, maybe not exactly new, there was always a huge market for mass-produced romance novels, and they were never as innocent as some of us would prefer to believe. My grandma has a whole wall unit of this stuff, and nobody but an eye, but I've read some of them. And these guys fu- So what has changed? Well, something happened. Something I like to call fanficfication of media. At first I thought fanficfication started with Fifty Shades of Grey, which is a literal Twilight fanfic. But then I realized that Twilight itself is already heavily fanfiction coded. What do I mean by that? There are obviously some very complex and well-written pieces of fanfiction, but in general, this is a medium that usually serves one simple purpose, to fulfill a fantasy. That's why it brought us things like ships or very specific tropes. Reading something on one of the popular fanfiction sites, you know beforehand what type of fantasy it is. Enemies to lovers, friends to lovers, fake dating, nothing. Do not google that. And similar trends now apply to the very specific type of original fiction that booktokers read. There is more to say about this trend and how it shapes the market, making all covers look the same, making marketing strategies obnoxious, and generally giving a bad name to the whole industry. But there are many videos about that already on YouTube if you're interested. I am kind of tired of scratching my head over why bad books get popular and make money. This time I'm just here for the lols. Twilight was a fantasy aimed at a very specific audience, so it was quite tamed and innocent. But since then, we took it farther and farther. She has student loans to pay and bills to pay. She can't find work in her career field. Okay? So, of course, she's gonna take off the minotaurs. <laughs> it's very scientific. If needed, there's hands on trick. <laughs> So here is an example of what I mean. For some of the book talkers, reading books equals consuming porn, to the point she calls her boyfriend a non-reader, meaning someone innocent, someone who is not used to that type of content, the content being minotaur cocksucking factory. To make things worse, a typical book talker is usually someone deemed cringe in the modern society, and that is a millennial woman, with her over-exaggerated expressions, quirky sense of humor, glass of wine in hand, and untamed horniness. Oh, how cringy. I... I could never. It is kind of funny, considering the way my generation used to make fun of middle-aged women obsessing over Fifty Shades of Grey, just to now read smut out loud on main. Circle of life, I guess. But this time I'm not gonna make fun of any women. What brings me here today are men. Men using booktok's popularity to first trap. If you're not familiar with the term, first trap is a picture or a video posted with an intention to make people horny for you. Women do that, men do that, non-binary folks do that, sometimes just for fun, sometimes to promote something. And first trapping men of TikTok noticed a new and very eager audience, women of BookTok, and they started pondering to them. And oh my god, that was the longest intro for a video I have ever made, just to explain to you the context of what we're about to witness. So let's dig into the meat of it all. Is that the expression? I swear, every time I speak English, I just improvise. Just one more thing. 
Please do not go and harass these men. They are not doing anything wrong. I'm pretty sure they intentionally lean into the cringe so people talk about them, so I don't feel bad talking about them. Just let's keep it fun and lighthearted, please. This one, for example, seems to be at least partially self-aware. I'm a book boyfriend. I don't know whether I'm meant to be worshipping you or degrading you. Thanks. I'm a book boyfriend. I can carry this many books with one hand. I'm a book boyfriend. Of course I know how to darken my eyes. My god. A book boyfriend. I know you want to be a strong female character, but you also want to be a lazy pillow princess who wears nothing but dresses. That's okay. I'm a book boyfriend. Of course I know about wingspan. <laughs> what the hell is a wingspan? Okay, so apparently it's how far men can stretch out their arms. I swear us non-lesbian women find the strangest things sexy on a man. I love that for us. Have you noticed, by the way, that being a book boyfriend includes practically everything but reading? See, this guy just touched a door frame with both hands, which makes a difference, I guess. And apparently this is the hottest thing since Adam Driver grabbed that beer bottle. Holy shit, that bottle looks tiny. Sir, you know exactly why. Please stop the, oh, I don't know what's happening. What is happening is 30-year-old women on TikTok writing book talk assemble in the comments every time they see a buff dude's arm with a tattoo sleeve. It's like their baiting call. They want to see you touch door frames. Sometimes it then turns into a group roleplay session that is so awkward to randomly stumble upon in the comments. You know what I'm scared of? Book talk girls. You summoned me? As a book talk girl, you have a right to be scared. Feral screeching noises approaching from the distance. Eek! Evil laughter in the corner. <laughs> Hi. Mm, what a sweet little boy. Aren't you adorable? As you should be. We're a feral bunch. See that like button? Press it. Do as you're told. Hmm. Make me. I did it. What do I get for it? Yes, master. I did it more than once. I double tapped. Now can I get my food? No, you didn't say please. So, like a good girl, huh? I did it. Am I a good girl? You didn't finish the sentence, so maybe you should do what you're told and call me a good girl. I just did. Is it good, daddy? Fine, I'll be good girl this one time. I did as I was told. Where's my praise? Legs stopped working. Help! Does it immediately. Did it? Looks up. The fuck do I do now? Obey every single damn... Wait, I did! And you probably won't be surprised to hear that aspiring musicians of TikTok are also jumping on this trend. And the results are crazy bad. Yeah, she looks like an angel, but loves like a devil. I think that I'm going to hell. She's perfectly cursed and she's perfectly curved. I know that I shouldn't kiss and tell. She's perfectly cursed and she's perfectly curved. With that fucking awful emoji might be the worst piece of lyrics I have ever heard. And it's just one of the songs on the whole BookTok album that guy made. She's five five with a little attitude. She likes guys, but she likes some girls too. Dark eyes and her hair matches her mood. She's my type, never will forget the view. I feel like he's just singing the intro to my immortal. The fanfic, not the song. You know, the hair that matches her mood. I'm sure he mentions her putting it in a messy bun at some point. She's exotic. Dark little features like she haunted. 
Excuse me? Darkly... How, how are people with dark features haunted? There's also this popular format when they make a little skit, like they're talking to their producer, but they play the role of both themselves and the producer, which makes me feel they don't have a producer. Yeah, so you know how we've been writing a lot of book talk songs lately? Yeah. Well, I think I just wrote the best book talk song ever. Nah, nothing beats Nasty or Slayer, dude. No, 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 just trust me. I think this one's even better. All right, man. You sound confident, so let's hear what you got. Okay, I'm down. Play me the beat from yesterday, but you gotta wait till the screaming part. It's like the best part. All right, bet. I'm gonna hop on the mic. She's a dark little artist with ink in her veins. She's been through the hardest, but prospered from pain. She appears to be heartless, surrounded by flames. But through all the darkness, a lover is changed. She's nerdy and sweet, but she's dirty underneath. If those flirty eyes could speak, lustful thoughts would release. Cause she hates that she loves so hard like a disease. It's left her with all these scars no one can see but me. I thrusted myself deep into- Oh my- Did you hear? This book community on TikTok is blowing up our song about haunting Adeline. Wait, are you serious? We can finally make it out the hood. Yeah, but now we just gotta see if we can follow up with an even dirtier, smuttier verse from the perspective of the main character, Zade. I've got just the thing. Get ready to bring back your emo phase. Let's go. For you, I'm a slave. I can be freed. Your hands, they shake. I say, just breathe. In a bit of you know creative and won't stop to just grow and name your pain attention. I want to react to teasing us slow and build the attraction. Grabbing their hands and pulling their breath. Desire is pulsing under my skin. I'm gonna take it right to the end. But what you finish until you beg? It's also super cute how they hype themselves up as the imaginary producer. The worst part about this whole genre of songs is how disingenuine it feels. Like I know these are not your actual thoughts about a woman. This is something you think a woman wants to hear. The whole, she's so innocent and independent, but deep down she wants me to choke her. Yeah, I didn't know it was possible, but apparently too much of a so-called female gaze can also be bad. You're an asshole. I'm an asshole, yet you're dripping all over my hand. What does that say about you? I am what? I got to appreciate this one because lip syncing that line with a straight face like that, that's a Golden Globe performance for me. The look my husband just gave me. Yeah, I'm with your husband on that one, Morgan. Can you imagine a man commenting the look my wife just gave me under some girl's OnlyFans video? Like, it's so casual. <laughs> Good for them, I guess. Over time, specific fractions have been formed in the world of book talk. Fractions based on the type of men the most popular in the genre. And if you think the type of men refers to their features or personality traits, you are wrong. The two most popular fractions in the book talk first trapping community are masked men, and bikers, who are also masked men because they never ever take their helmets off. Sir, you are sitting on a couch. I cannot think of any situation in which wearing a head protection gear would be less necessary. Is that a biker boy? There's no way, I've never seen one in real life. Oh my god, I have to go follow him. Should I sneak a video of his bike? Oh my god. Hmm. Oh my god, there he is. What the fuck? Wait, he... What the fuck? How did he get up there? Okay, okay, he's right there, he's right there. In this universe, bikers are not just people who happen to like motorcycles. They are some type of rare species wandering the earth, and I just now realized those might not be helmets. Their heads are just like that.
Oh, I'm sorry, we got a Mr. Reader over here. Let's see if he likes the books. My dear boy, you already knew what BookTok girlies were reading. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting in your bed with a helmet on. How can you even read with this thing on your head and with just some blue LED lights behind you? You are going to ruin your eyesight, young man. He grabbed me by my waist, pulled me in close, and gave me a big kiss. And then we lived happily ever after. He me in my and grabbed my and my this reminds me of those boomer jokes about women watching porn and expecting it to end with a wedding. Like I said, women always loved reading freaky shit. It was just disguised as a lovey-dovey romance novel so your mom could read it at the breakfast table and forget for a moment that she's your mom. Mm, that's my good girl. Oh fuck. What? I just forgot how to breathe. I'm sorry, but her accent in comparison to his weird ass growling was so cute. This was delightful. She chose me. Did she? Masked men don't even pretend that their headgear serves any practical purpose. I think it's just a trend inspired by popularity of Ghost from Call of Duty and some other masked characters from pop culture. Four push-ups. Impressive. You are all puff dudes in masks. I'm sure you can sort things out somehow. It's like that beekeepers meme. Are there first trapping beekeepers on TikTok? I feel like they should be huge in the community. When the book talk girly wasn't all talk, she's in my house. I love how mask talk and bike talk fight over book talk, but the second they get one, we're too much. Don't run. Or do, it's more exciting that way. When they realize we are just as unhinged as their doors. I'm a book talk girl and my boyfriend stays away from me when he sees a book in my hands. We are feral and not for the weak-minded. When you finally kidnap a book talk girl. As a book talk girl, I wouldn't leave even if you let me go. Oh, that's my good girl. As book talk girlies are definitely a different breed. All the book talk girlies agreeing we wouldn't leave. I don't want you to leave. I need this man to call me a good girl. Specifically me? Yes, please. I'm gonna just lay claim to the book talk girls. You belong to us bikers now. You can't claim book talk girls. They claim you. But I'm in charge. When you're a book talk girly, but you are just enjoying the chaos between bike talk and mask talk. No, you belong to us. Get that right. I mean, you gotta catch us first. We're kinda into that hunter prey shit. I'm pretty good with a rope. See if you can escape me then. I think he's the first to actually not be scared of book talk. I embrace the darkness. Looks up from book. Okay, and? I'm still single and lonely. Continues reading. Are you sure you can handle the crazy that comes with a book talk gal? We read some pretty crazy stuff. I thrive in the dark depths of crazy. No, it's the other way around. You belong to us. Not when I'm in the room. You follow my lead and listen to me. Show me how you play with it. Show me how you play with it. Come on. Atta girl. Atta fucking girl. That's a good girl. All right, that one is so uh, where I draw the line. That one is too much for me. Thank God it's a fake situation, though. I'm a voice actor. 
You're doing so good for me. Yes, yes. That's right, baby. Mm, look at that pretty smile. I love it so much. <laughs> and that one caught me off guard. Can you imagine if I cheerfully told you I'm a comic artist? Here's a picture of you and me fucking as fairies. But on a serious note, is there something we could learn from BookTok and its popularity? Maybe something about women's sexuality? Critics of the genre point to toxic tropes of control, jealousy and violence as something, well, problematic. How can women demand agency and equality in real life but then fantasize about men dominating them? Seems like they're not being truthful about their true goals and desires. But fantasies are fantasies and not reality for a reason. I'm not a psychologist or a scholar of any type, but if I was to speculate on why these tropes are so popular, I would say they probably serve as a coping mechanism of some sort. Listen, living as a woman, you will inevitably experience a sense of dread that comes with male anger, male jealousy, or men trying to control you. Subverting all of that and turning into something that is not threatening but comforting makes us feel like we're in control. Or it's just for the thrills. I don't know, I think that's it for me, over-intellectualizing stuff. Bye. Book talk is a trend that happened on our platform is to encourage people to read. And globally, it has 115 billion views, and it's fantastic. I've heard people telling me that they are reading more because of book talk. So there is a lot of good and joy and positive that can be derived from the TikTok experience. Yeah, you're dripping all over my hand. 